look at two different pruning systems and this is during the active growing season we're going to look at a cordon trained spur prune system as well as a cane prune system but first this is the cordon trained system so we have the cordon here which runs horizontally and we have these spurs which are vertical and these are older wood and then they come into this younger wood which is our current season's growth or we call these canes after one year of growth each one of these older areas here, the spurs, will always give rise to these younger shoots that will grow out. And we call this our renewal zone. And if we look up this spur, this happens to be a spur that was pruned down to one bud, but we have two buds that grew. And you can see the shoots that come out from this. We come down another six inches, we have another spur, and this is very good spacing. We don't want them any closer than this, otherwise we get too dense of a cluster zone and our canopy is much too dense. So this is a closer look at the top of the spur where we have the the actual spur that was cut off during the win this past winter and we have the buds that grew up. So here's shoot number one and shoot number two. These two shoots will produce the fruit that we have for this year and this spur represents a two bud spur. In fact, it could be considered a one bud spur because this was the one bud you could see at pruning and this could be considered our non-count bud. But in some cases, that non-count bud does actually have fruit. If we look at this non-count shoot, you'll see right here that it doesn't have, in fact, have fruit. And of course, the second shoot in here also has fruit. But they have two clusters, whereas this lower one only had one cluster. So we are now looking at a cane pruned Pinot Noir vine. And in cane pruning, this is a little bit different than the cordon system. Coming closer and look at this. This is the head of the vine, the trunk, the head of the vine. From the head comes this cane. And when we say cane pruned, it's this cane that was laying down during the late dormant period of this past winter. And this was last year's growth. And on it, it had buds at each one of these positions. And from those buds grew the shoot that we have this year. One of the reasons that we use a cane prune system is because some of the basal buds on a shoot oftentimes do not produce fruitful shoots. So for example, some of our shoots further up that would have been at the third or fourth and later on, bud positions that are laid out have fruitful shoots as shown here. In a cordon train system the spurs are relying on buds that are closer in on the cane and may not be as fruitful. So that's one consideration in a cane prune system. Another thing to consider with cane prune systems is that they oftentimes require a bit more shoot positioning than a cordon train system. If you look at the distribution of the canes here, you see that they're not perfectly straight up. They oftentimes will bunch. Like you see here at the head of the vine, they're bunching in clusters. Over here, they're bunching and they tend to grow in an angle to the, to the angle of the bud. They're a bit harder to go in and actually position in the canopy so that they're perfectly straight to help alleviate some of the bunching and density of the cluster zone. So now we're looking back at the cordon train spur prune vine where you can look at the shoot positioning in this system it looks much different than the cane system where the shoots seem to bunch in the cane system. Over here they tend to be a little bit better distributed because of the positioning of the bud on the spur puts one shoot in one direction positioning it a little bit further away from the next. This allows for a little bit better airflow particularly when, as shown in this training system here, where there's been cluster zone leaf removal that allows for better management of the microclimate and management of diseases. Also, if you look down this row, you'll see that the distribution of shoots are somewhat better positioned for management of that microclimate, reducing disease and allowing for better airflow. And there's also less bunching of the clusters and the shoots.
So one thing to remember with a cordon trained and spur pruned vine is the placement of your spurs and maintenance of the spurs. This is an example of a well established cordon with nicely spaced spurs. This is very well managed. The spurs have enough space between them. They don't have too many shoots. They have about two shoots per spur and they have at least four to six inches between each one of the spurs and this is absolutely critical for managing a cordon spur prune system very well for an open cluster zone and there may be additional management steps that need to be taken in a cordon train system but there's also systems like the cane prune system that needs to be managed as well so it's critical to remember spur placement as well as number of shoots per spur.